Hello and welcome, this is the Well-Paid Geek. Today you'll be getting started with the hottest JavaScript library out there, React, in under 10 minutes. So what is React? React is a JavaScript library created by Facebook for building user interfaces. It allows you to build and combine reusable UI components, much like creating your own custom HTML tags. These components are declarative views, which update as the data in your application updates, i.e. they react to changes in your application state, hence the name of the library. Enough background, let's get started. You need a recent version of Node for this to work, so if you haven't got that installed already, go and do that first. When that's done, in the terminal, I want you to type npm install g create dash react dash app. This will install an npm package that creates bare bones react apps for you with all the webpack configuration and required modules already set up for you so you can start coding straight away. After that's done installing you need to do create dash react dash app then a space and the name of whatever you want to call your new app Let's call it my-first-app. And this will set up your new React app and install all the necessary dependencies. That'll take a little while, and after it's done, you need to go into the directory that's just been created. So that's my-first-app. And you'll see here it's installed an NPM application for us. It's created our bare bones React app. And we just do an NPM start. And this will this will compile the app and run the dev server. And it's also in a moment going to open, here we go, it opens a browser window and runs the app in it for you. That's very convenient. Um, so it's still just loading. It's still probably compiling in the background. And there we go. And this is the bare bones React app. And you can see here it tells you to go to SRC app JS, edit the code and save, and it will auto reload. So let's do that now. Open the code in an editor of your choice and go to the SRC folder. And then you want to go to app JS. And this is the main top level app component that renders what we saw in the browser. If you remember, there's this text here about getting started. Let's just edit this and change it to say, hello world. And if we save it and go back to the browser, the code recompiles, it hot reloads and we get hello world. So now let's create our first React component and then we'll be able to use it just like a custom HTML tag really. We're going to make a component which is a button and some dynamic text. When you click the button, it's going to toggle hiding the text. So in SRC, I want you to create a new file. We're going to call it hideabletext.js. We're going to import React from React. Then we're going to export as default a new class and we're going to call that hideable text and it needs to extend the react.component class. We give it a constructor and the constructor takes an argument called called props. These are just properties for the component and they can be passed in like attributes are passed to an HTML tag. And we do just need to call super in the constructor passing through the props. And super just calls the parent class constructor. So it's calling the react.component constructor. That just ensures the class is set up properly. Next, we have a very special function called render. Now, whatever gets returned from render is what gets rendered in the browser for this component. So we're going to return some JSX, it's called, which is XML within JavaScript. And this JSX is just going to be a div. So it's just like doing HTML tags 
within our JavaScript, really. It's going to be a div. And then we're going to have a button. And we'll call it toggle. And then some just some hard coded text for now. Now we have this component, we can go ahead and import it into our app component. So we open that file and we just import it, import hideable text from hideable text. Now we can use it pretty much like a custom HTML tag. So if we go within this div class name app content, we just go hideable text like an HTML tag. We save it and then we'll have a look and see how it looks in the browser. And there we go, we've got our button that does nothing at the moment and our text. React elements can take arguments called props that are a lot like attributes for HTML tags. So to our hideable text, we'll add one called text. And as the value, just as a string, we will put dynamic text. Now we go back to our component and that text prop will be available in the component within an object called this.props. It comes in via the constructor here and is passed to the superclass. So we want to output this here and if you want to output the result of an expression in JSX, you just wrap the expression in curly braces. That's completely wrong the expression in curly braces so we're going to do this dot props dot text and that will be the dynamic text we just passed in as the prop so if we save this and take a look in the browser the text should have changed so as we can see we've now got our dynamic text and the button does absolutely nothing let's fix that now Props are one form of data available to a React component. They are passed in from outside the component, as we saw, and are immutable. But we can also store internal mutable data within a component, and this is called state. Um, we will define this within the constructor, so we will go this.state, and state is a special property on a React component, so it has to be called state. And it's just a plain old JavaScript object, so we can just define it as an object literal. We will add an is hidden property, defaulting to false. So obviously, if is hidden is true, the text will be hidden, otherwise, it will be shown. And we can achieve that by going down here and doing not this.state dot is hidden and props.text. This means the text will only show if is hidden is true. Next, we need a way to toggle is hidden. So let's go up here, let's create a new method on the class called toggle is hidden. It doesn't take any arguments. And this is going to use a special method which is inherited from the react.component class. And this is called set state. Um, for reasons I won't go into now, because it's beyond the scope of the video, this dot state should never be altered manually after being initially set up in the constructor. So we call this dot set state, and this takes a function as an argument, and it gives us actually the current state as an argument to this function, and then this function has to return the changes we want to make to the state object in the form of an object. So we'll return an object and we want is hidden to be the result of toggling the current is hidden, so current state dot is hidden. And again, for reasons I won't go into now because it's too complicated for the moment, you must always get the current value of any state object when you're doing a set state from current state, not from this dot state. You'll have to watch my entire React course to find out why I think it's a bit more complicated. But this toggle is hidden function will do exactly what we want. Next comes the task of hooking toggle is hidden 
up to this button here. It's actually very simple. Um, it's a lot like in HTML and JavaScript without React, how you would have, how you would add rather, an event handler. You just put it straight on as an attribute, on click in this case. It's going to be an expression, so we want the curly braces again. And then we just put an arrow function, and all this arrow function is going to do is call this dot toggle is hidden. Let's save that and check this in the browser. First, I have just noticed a big error. Um, in toggle is hidden, I set the new value of is hidden to be exactly the same as the current value, which is obviously wrong. We want to negate it, so it's toggled. And now it should work. So in the browser, we have the toggle button, we have the dynamic text, we click toggle and the text disappears. We toggle it again and it reappears. So that's working as intended. So what's happening here is when we initially render the button is hidden is false. And so the text is hidden. Then when we click the button, toggle is hidden is called set state is called and it sets is hidden to true. Each time we update the state of react component, the component re renders. So the render function is called again. And so when we click for the first time and is hidden is set to true, this function is then called again. This time is hidden is true. And so the text isn't shown. So that was just a very quick whistle stop tour introduction to React and your first little component. I'm sorry it didn't come in at quite under 10 minutes, but what's a few minutes between friends? I glossed over a lot of points here, but I'm going to be doing a new video pretty much every day, Monday to Friday for the foreseeable future. And many of these will feature React in more detail. So subscribe below, click that button.